All right, welcome back. Next, let's work on making our website responsive. Right now, it's not looking great. Same thing with the individual palette when we view it. Also, not very usable. We've got the button overflowing to copy. This more button is over, er, overlapping with the name of the color. They're taking up too much space. It's just not looking great. Also, the nav bar. We have this whole massive stretch of white because our nav bar is taking up so much space. So we can work on fixing that. So let's start by talking about how we even write media queries inside of JSS when we're using with styles right here. Let's take a look at the palette component and the palette styles right here. So here we have the styles for the entire palette. And actually let's look at the individual color box styles. Okay. So if we take something like width, we're setting width to be 20%. If we change it to be 50%, obviously we're gonna end up with these palette boxes or color boxes that are much wider. We're not gonna do that, but maybe on a mobile size or a tablet size, we might want that to happen. So we can write that by nesting it in here and writing a media query. So add media, and then in parens, we can do max width or min width. So let's do max width of 500 pixels. So we'll worry about the actual breakpoints later. So this is going to apply between zero pixels and up to 500 pixels. So we could set width to be, let's do 100%. So they go all the way across the screen. Let's see what happens. So as I scale down to 500 or so pixels right there, we can see our boxes now go all the way across the screen. So we might want that to happen at 500 pixels. And then maybe we want something else to happen when we're at 900 pixels. So 900 between 500 and 900. So we could set width to be 50% at that point. So now we should have four across 25%. Then we hit 50%. Then we hit one across 100%. So we haven't changed the height yet, so they're still quite large, but it looks okay. Although I did just realize this was supposed to be 20 originally. Now we have five across. Okay, so with media queries, this is the easiest way to write them. What's kind of annoying is if we have to do this across multiple components or multiple styles, which we will, we need to style the form. We need to style the draggable color box. We need to style almost all of these with some form of a media query. And it's not a huge deal to write this over and over and over, but it is annoying if we do want to change one of those breakpoints and we have all these string media queries written across 10 different styles, we have to change it in each place. Just like uh, with the drawer width, if we wrote it in two different places, we had to change it in both places, but then we moved it to a constant somewhere in here. Where is that? Constants right here. Finally got it. Now we change it in one place. What I'm going to do is build a helper method that will allow me to write media queries like this. I'll be able to say sizes dot down, for example, and then pass in a size like small, or we could even make it work for the string mobile or tablet, but I'm just going to stick to small, extra small. So when I write this, it's not going to work. But the idea is that this will be replaced with a media query that targets all sizes small and below. So I could also write up, which would be all sizes small and up. But because we wrote our entire app, we didn't write it mobile first, meaning that we styled it to look good on a large screen first. I don't want to rewrite all of this code inside of other media queries. So I'm going to use the down version. So style from a certain size down. So we'll say style from medium size down, small down, rather than going the other direction because we already have the top level, the widest styles set up. Okay, so I'm gonna write a method that will return a media query for me. And the sizes I'm gonna use, uh, I'm just gonna take from the pretty standard breakpoint sizes. They're the ones Bootstrap uses. Okay, here we go. So this is on bootstrap or getbootstrap.com. Here are the different pixel widths or the screen widths that they assign. 
So 575, basically 576 and below is a portrait phone, 767.98 is a landscape phone, and so on. So I'm just gonna copy these. I'm gonna make a new file. And for now, I'm just gonna put it in the source directory. Actually, I think I'm gonna put it in the styles directory. And I'm gonna call it size, sizes.js or media queries. We'll go with sizes.js. I'm gonna paste this in just so I have a reference to those numbers. And I'm going to export default an object. And my object will have two methods, up, and then we'll also have down. So I'll be able to write something like up small, which will give me a media query from small and up. And I could write down small, which would give me small and below. Okay, so we're gonna mainly work with down so I'm going to start by defining my actual breakpoints, the, the actual sizes. So we'll have extra small is this breakpoint here, or this number of pixels. Then we'll have small, which is this right here. Then we'll have medium. And then we'll have this size here for large. Now we don't need an extra large in our case because we already have extra large. All of the code we've written is for extra large devices. Now we're just trying to work with these smaller ones. Then we'll have this take a size. Then what I'm going to do is return a string, which I'll use my backticks to form. And we're gonna copy this format. So at media, parens, max dash width, colon, and then we want to take this size and use it to access one of these pixel values. Dollar sign interpolation, we will add sizes of size. That gives us the pixels, and then that should be it. We have our paren there, and that should work. Let's export, we're already doing that. Get rid of this up top. Let's see if we can use it. Now, in my color box styles, I'm going to import sizes from dot slash sizes. Now what I can do is add in sizes dot down. Let's go with medium and add some styles. So for our color box, we will set the, let's change the height just so it's easier to tell. Let's go with height of 10%. So they'll be very narrow from medium size and down. Does it work? Uh, no, it doesn't. I missed a comma. Here we go. And actually, instead of height, let's do width. And we'll do 50%. I'll explain why I changed that in a moment. So as we start changing, we hit medium. There we go. So now we're able to style things. I mean, we haven't, this is no new functionality. It's just that we can share this across our different files and have the same breakpoints. I don't have to write all of that extra code. And if I want to change the size, I change it right here. Now we could implement the same thing to go the other direction, but since we're mainly gonna use down, I'm just gonna stick with this. So let's think about how this should work. When I'm on the extra small size, I'm gonna have them go all the way across. So 100%. So we can start with that. From extra small and below, we'll have width be 100%. So they look like this, but I also want to shrink the height. The problem we have is that our height is dynamic and we're using these styles both for the regular palette color boxes and for our color boxes here. So everything we do is applying to this as well. So I'm gonna use another dynamic value for the height based off of the props. So if we're showing the full palette, we'll go 100% for width. And if we think of how many colors we have, if I want this to take up the full screen but not make me scroll, we have a maximum of 20 colors. And so that means we're gonna have 20 different rows, 20 blocks. So each one is going to need to be 5%, if I did my math correct. There we go. So now our color boxes on mobile look like this. However, when we go to more, they are much thicker because we haven't changed that. So if we have a maximum of 10, we have nine colors, nine shades, plus our one black go back button. 
which we will have to style separately. You can see it's behaving oddly. I'm going to give that a height of 10%. So in this case, honestly, it might've been easier for us to have a completely separate style object for the single color box versus the all colors. That's not a very good way of putting it, but this view versus this view, they behave in similar ways, but there are some key differences. But that ship has sailed at this point, so I'm gonna stick with it. So when we view on mobile here on a small size, now they look like this. 100% across, 5% down, but if we're looking at one of these, where we see only 10 colors, or actually nine right now, because we have to fix this, we're now getting 10% height. Okay, so that's the first bit, but what about other breakpoints along the way? For example, I'd say about here, it starts to get cramped where our text and this button to go to see more are starting to collide into one another. So we need some other sizes. So let's target, I believe that will be the, well, let's see what it looks like. Let's do sizes dot down of large. So the large size and below, we're going to set width to be, let's try 25% to start and just see where that kicks in. Okay, so that is the large size right there. We now have four across. So now, if we have four going across, we have one, two, three, four, five rows. If we want them to take up 100%, we need to give each one a height of 20%. So I'm gonna do the same thing. We'll have comma. If we're showing the full palette, height will be 20%. So as I shrink right there, now we see all of our colors and each one takes up 25% across, 20% down. Then we look at this page and it's kind of messed up because now we're saying each one of them is still 50%. Now it's kind of tricky for, to figure out how we should handle this because we have 10 items and we're going four across. How do we wanna distribute that? So what I'm gonna do is stop styling this single color palette and just focus on getting this page to look good first. Then we'll revisit this and try and make the mess go away. Okay, so let's focus on this. That looks decent. And then we start to get cramped again. So let's see if the small size or the medium size will help us. I'm just gonna duplicate this. Change from medium. Let's go to 50% across. So let's see what 50% looks like. Right there, they shift over. Okay. So now we have two across and we have 10 rows. So each one should have a height of 10%. And now we can see all of our colors and it's pretty spacious. And then right as it starts to get cramped, we go to this. Everything else looks pretty good. We might need to change the font size of our copy, but otherwise it looks decent. Okay. So now we have these different breakpoints that we've set up. If you prefer, a different approach would be to just make it scrollable and keep things the same height, keep five across and just make the user scroll. But this looks okay. It definitely looks best here because the order of our colors doesn't get messed up like it does here. But that's, I mean, honestly, I don't know how many people are gonna be using a color picker app to copy colors on mobile. It's just not a very good experience, but we should make it responsive anyway. So that's most of it for the color box. If we take a look, I don't really see any pain points. It's working well. This is not, but I'm gonna commit for now. Um, we're gonna worry about the nav bar later, but next up, we're gonna focus on getting this page to look good. So I'm gonna commit and I'll call this add responsive helper and style color box. Okay.